Welcome to the Simplified Marketing Podcast. Straight talking ideas to grow your business. Hello and welcome to the Simplified Marketing Podcast, the show that aims to help you grow your business. We all know that the outlook at the moment is very difficult with um, obviously the lockdown and the virus. So we're trying to help support all the people listening and different businesses with great advice, great guests, and a wealth of experience that you can draw on. Now, we're delighted to be joined today by Darren Carter. Darren is a financial advisor who specializes with trades. Um, so Darren, please tell us a bit more about you and how you work. Thanks for having me on, firstly. Um, I'm a, a financial advisor from St. James Place. Um, I've been doing it for two years now. Um, I had a, a big history. I used to run a, a plumbing and heating company before that. I generally work with the trades now. Um, I sit down with them, look at where we can help, and advise on tax strategies, whether it's lowering their tax bills, looking at helping make sure their family's protected and start planning to sort of hit them financial goals that they want to achieve. That's quite a big jump, isn't it, from a, a trades perspective into the, the financial sector. Um, like pat on the back for that, for sure. A lot of people say that, but it, it doesn't really feel like that to me. It's just solving problems with a different skill set. Before it was with tools, but you need the knowledge. And now I'm doing exactly the same. I've got the knowledge. I just don't have to go and do it physically. For me, it's, you know, working out them little components and how they work and then plugging it into to solving the bigger problems. So it really isn't that big of a jump for me. It's a great attitude, for sure. Dan, what's your biggest challenge at the moment you find when you're speaking to other trades guys about their finances? Understanding. A lot of the guys tend to just pile up their receipts, pass it off to their accountant, um, and they're not really taking that much of a, uh, they're not really getting too involved in it. One of the things I, I see a lot is people come up to me saying, I've got a huge tax or VAT bill. What can I do about it? Or, you know, I've got a corporation tax bill. And what a lot of them aren't doing is understanding how it works and then making provisions for that. Do you think this goes back to, I mean, one of the things that I often struggle with is we see a lot of trades guys that from a technical point of view are fantastic at their job, but maybe just you know, have a difficulty adjusting to the business style or the business life or the things that need to do on that side and maybe almost feel too much pride in actually asking for help and support. And like you say, a lot of these guys have probably come out of school, learned a trade, done that for 10 years and then decided, right, I'm going to do it for myself. Um, but that doesn't automatically make you a businessman. What I see is a lot of guys making the same mistakes over and over. And what they'll do is they'll ask their friend for advice who's probably made the same mistakes. So rather than getting some professional advice, they're learning off someone who's, who's probably made their mistakes as well. And I guess with you, they can kind of resonate a bit more, right? Because you've been through probably most of their challenges that they've had. You've probably been there, seen it, done it, bought the T-shirt. When you're speaking with them, it, it can probably be a little bit more on a level, right? And they can kind of buy into what you're saying a little bit more because they know that you had to solve that problem in your own business as well, right? Exactly. I've, I've been through them problems. I've, I've made them mistakes. So one of the things I've tried to do is you know, sit down with them as a financial advisor, go, go in a bit deeper and go beyond what I should be doing and perhaps give them a bit of advice or pointing them to the right people that they should be speaking to. A lot of these guys I've worked with, so I've, I've got that trust from knowing them as a tradesman. And now it's transferred and I'm talking to them. We're just having a... You know, we're still talking on the same level, but I'm just helping them with a different thing. I think it's a good niche to have, and it's so important. And obviously, choosing a BNI. I know you've joined Rip there recently. There's a you know a whole group of guys at different chapters, and, and as you say, for I know from coaching different trades and different um, different technical backgrounds, whether it's electricians, builders, plumbers, etc. I would say this is the one area there seems to be a massive fear or misunderstanding about. I think these guys maybe have a bookkeeper, maybe use accounting pack software, but then they're super reliant on their accountant for all the answers. I mean, is there a big difference between the type of advice they should expect from an accountant versus the type of advice that you'd give? Yes. Yeah, so generally speaking, your accountant will look backwards, and this isn't trying to sort of disrespect accountants, um, whereas my job is trying to look forward and plan you know, what can we do? So things like pension contributions in the tax year can help lower your corporation tax. Um, 
these special types of investments we can do. It's not really an accountant's job. They can help with what you've done through the year uh, with your books, but they can't give advice on investments and pensions and protection. So that's where we come in. So there is an overlap of the two jobs. I think really to, to get the best for your business, you need to work with both. Um, and if both can be on the same side, it, it really helps. And that's where the things like Zero and your accounting software, that helps. Because a lot of the guys I was trying to talk to in the, in when I first started, they really didn't have a, a clue of what was going on within their business. But uh, by the time we come to try and help them, the accountant would close in the year and that was it. All the chances of lowering their tax had gone. So it's a really good idea to work with, with a good accountant that does try to look forward and a, a financial advisor. So do you think then that trades are generally put off by by working with a financial advisor because they have a certain opinion of, of one, as in it's some guy in a big suit who's going to be very expensive and somebody who doesn't talk necessarily the same language or the same way as them? Uh, I think that's across the board as well. I think when I was on the tools and I'd be in my work trousers and work gear six days a week, the only real interaction I had with guys in offices is where you sort of walking past going to do a job in their office and you generally got no attention or it was someone in a uh, plumber's merchants one of the reps trying to sell you something so you you naturally sort of steer away i think there's a, a big disconnect between the corporate world and and the um construction industry how is it you determine just jumping back to your note on the softwares because i get some of my trades guys that are sort of just coming into this digital zone now and appreciating that uh, doing everything online that no they have to as well um, is really important but how do you know which software like you would recommend as a course of going forward we generally some guys will have some experience some might have started up a quickbooks account and be using that and be happy with that some guys maybe using zero um they're the two main ones and then there's one uh, free agent that you get with NatWest. um and really if it's a startup i'd probably say to the guys that if you're trying to keep costs down you might want to have a look at free agent um, do your banking through them and um, get the software for free um, but I generally go with what people are using, not trying to make them change, just trying to get them to learn. The theory is the same on each. They should be able to take what, they've, what they're have what they already using and just make sure they've got the, the skills to do that. Is that something you'd offer sort of training and things for as well in your business or do you direct them to someone that might be able to help them? Because I know tech is often one of the biggest challenges for well, my trades clients especially. At the moment, I'm doing the zero foot qualification. Okay. So one, so I can help people with problems. Two, if people have got the software already, they can add me in. But I have been talking to ch- some training providers as well, trying to provide some free training. I think we spoke to we spoke before, that probably in itself is, is a huge benefit for you. Because if it's a challenge to get trades to open up about their finances in the first place and look far into the future, which again, a lot of these guys struggle to create a real long-lasting vision of their business. But for you to be able to solve problems, jump into their zero, see what's going on and provide real value there, I think that's massive because some of the bookkeepers and certainly some of the accountants are so elusive at times and are so difficult to get hold of unless you're paying them you know, £1,000 a month and they're your best friends. I think that's where there's probably the this, this stepping stone for you, bridging that gap between the, the trade sales and the financial sector, if you like. Yeah, definitely. Um, heard of some accountants and bookkeepers kind of steering away from trades guys because they, they expect them to just turn up with big shoe boxes and dirty old receipts, and um, it's not ideal. But we are, we are moving to a digital sort of generation coming through. Um, and these guys don't always work like that. But yeah, as you say, if we can help them along the way, it does bridge that gap because it is a. If, if when I go and sort of speak to them, I'm a financial advisor. It is a very cold subject, and people kind of clam up on their their personal finances. So for me, this has been a, a softer way in, um, just helping them generally, and then pointing them to what they should be doing. Like I say, not just necessarily strictly on okay let's plan for the future what protection have you got building on some of the things that i used to do in the past um you know with my business experience in construction just little pointers help people out and then 
you build a relationship and build that trust, then it's a bit easier to talk to them about specific things. I guess that's that's really important as well, isn't it? Because I, I you know, especially from experience of my own clients a lot of the time, the biggest um, push for people to get in touch with someone like me is if things aren't going well and they aren't getting enough clients themselves. So only picking up the phone and trying to do something about it when things go wrong, obviously being the worst ever <laughs> way of actually trying to do things about it. Um, so it's, it's getting people to actually understand that these things are important right now before wasting the chance. Yeah, definitely. And even with myself, it's one of the biggest things I get is oh, I haven't got any money. The only way you're going to start to get money is we start putting a plan in place and you know getting that financial discipline to start you saving, looking at what you've actually been doing and pointing out the errors. You find some people are spending ridiculous amounts on Sky and Netflix and every possible app and subscription you can find, every catalogue. I love that you find out so much about these people. So... <laughs> so why you spend? Why are you on the top level of Sky? You know, I, I think, yeah, a lot of these subscription things people don't necessarily notice, do they? It just keeps rolling over, and the kids will get upset if they can't watch a certain amount of channels. So you just keep paying it, but you don't ever review it. Yeah. We've, we've had two life insurances running alongside each other, exactly right. the same for years, and they just don't know. Um, yeah, you only get better if you start taking a deeper look and start making some plans. I was just going to say, um, it's a kind of a chicken and egg situation, isn't it? You're trying to get the money in. But if you're not aware of what's going out, you're never going to be in a, in a happy place, right, for the business. So I guess whereas a lot of our trades boys sort of shy away and maybe fear the whole numbers thing, here, accountant, here's my shoebox of stuff, crack on. But without kind of addressing and feeling comfortable to try and learn some of this, like the basic level, just to be able to spot do you know what maybe the outgoings this month that was quite a lot we need to cut back on that because I can clearly see on my zero uh, because Darren showed me how to look at the profit and loss page which is just nice and simple but had I not been able to speak and ask that easy question to someone like you I'd forever that would be in tech space I have no idea I don't want to look I don't want to know and then you just end up in that vicious circle don't you well, imagine if you've got three or four of those subscriptions where it's, as you say, Netflix, Prime, Apple TV, et cetera. I mean, how much TV can one person watch? And then, you know, and then in terms of putting that... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Be surprised. Like, good go, mate. Yeah, sure. But then, you know, thinking about, well, what's important? Is it the family? Is it protection? What happens if there's another pandemic or recession and you can't work? I mean, Darren, I suppose that's the other side of your business, the actual sort of life insurance or protection that you sort out as well, is it? Yeah, that's, that's been a big uh, key area for me. Um, I've had probably three incidents instances locally where I've known guys on the tools that have died at an early age. Wow. And that's, and that's in the last couple of years since I've been doing this. One I found out through a GoFundMe page on the back of the door in the plumber's merchant. So it, it does kind of hit home. I was going through the training and I realised I had no no life insurance, no criticalness, nothing for the kids if I was to die. And that's what a lot of these guys' situations are like. They're, a lot of them will probably be the main breadwinner, you know, with a family at home, maybe wife working or maybe working part-time. If one of them parents dies or is injured or we go through something like this, it's making sure that there's something in place that you're not financially impacted. Yeah, I think just just for that alone, it's it's so worth just having a conversation with you from that perspective, um, you know. And then, of course, it will lead on to the other the other stuff. But you know, to, for, to be the ages that we all are now, I appreciate Georgia's quite a lot older than us, but to all know <laughs> something. <laughs> Thank but to be in this sort of age category now where we're not old and there's people that are really suffering, I find that unbelievable. So, and as you say, it's such an easy thing and where we could just have one or two coffees less at Costa's every month or, you know, not the three subscriptions. It just makes no sense whatsoever. Um, just to move it on to a slightly more cheery subject, um, we met through, through Instagram on the construction page that you've built. Just talk to us a little bit about that brand. When I first started uh, talking to construction guys, um, there, there was a, a, a big gap between being on the tools and then trying to talk about their financial advice. And then when we started, we come across the problems like the accountants weren't providing them the right help. Um, they didn't know. Um, 
So what I try to do is just take it back to the beginning, give and just give them not a great in-depth knowledge on everything, but give them enough knowledge to either work out how to do things themselves or to find someone that could help with that. Some believer in the more you know, um, the better you'll become and the better businessman you'll become if you if you immerse yourself in learning about VAT and tax um, and creating a bit of structure, opening a couple of bank accounts and each month separate out, separate out your VAT money and your CIS money and work, whatever's left is yours. So it's just teaching them principles that can help them or connecting them with people that can, can help them that are specific to the construction industry. I'd love to know how it is that you work then. I mean, I don't have an IFA, um, but maybe I really need to start having now listened to you. Um, but, you know, what kind of what kind of ways do you work in, in your business or do you prefer to work? Does someone come to you and you kind of audit, you have a little look at everything and let them know what they should be doing and then it's up to them where they go? Do you work on a monthly basis with your clients? Like, I'd love to know how, how it all comes together. So we just start with a, a couple of meetings, just a chat, really. We just find out more about you, what your life goals, sort of short, medium and long term. And then when we can kind of plot where you want to go, we sit down and then we delve deeper into what you've actually been doing. Um, we look at pretty much three months worth of bank statements, see where all your money can go in and make suggestions, really individual. So if yours is looking towards getting a house then we'll start working on a plan for that other guys might be some protection work or it might be you know especially with these businesses but one thing i've been doing with the construction industry is using pension contributions to lower corporation tax so it's a great way to to help with that and plan for the future no no costs up front it's just it's just off the back of putting things in place well look one more question from me and that would be obviously you're speaking to different trades um, but if you were to start your plumbing business all over again with the financial information and knowledge that you have now, what things would you have done differently? Change my accountant. <laughs> 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 Hired a financial advisor. Um, no, I think I would have put more time into learning about the business side. The greater understanding you've got, you can ask them questions. I would have probably structured myself how I'm trying to teach people now separate the money out i used to fall foul of you know getting to the end of three months and getting a big fat bill and not knowing where it'd come from i'd probably put a plan in place to specialize what i was doing i tended to work on anything and everything i did gas solar no bathrooms i did sort of mansions you know i'd probably pick something work out where i want to go with my business um, and put a plan in place for that and then bring in people that could help. So maybe someone like, like yourself, Andrew, um, probably give me a bit of guidance, um, you know, working with more of a coach than just trying to do it myself. You know, a bit of biggest things. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Darren. If, so if our, if our listeners want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? My website is darrencarterwealthmanagement.co.uk or give me a call, phone number 79 Brilliant stuff. Well, thank you very much to, for Darren. You can find out more about uh, Darren and all our expert contributors at marketingsimplified.co.uk. And of course, if you're listening on iTunes, then please do leave us a review. Let us know what you think of the show and if there's anything else you'd like to see featured on the show. Um, but for now, stay safe and we'll see you next time. That's all for this time. But don't worry, we'll be back with more soon. Stay tuned for new episodes at marketingsimplified.co.uk.